Hi there. Welcome to daytime. Kicking off another week. It is Monday, January the 19th. 19th. We're almost through a month already. We're like more than halfway. Isn't that incredible? That's scary. Spring is that much closer. And do you know what today happens to be, Mr. Barna? January 19th, Monday. It is? You just said that. It is the most depressing day of the year. It is not. Are you serious? According to formulations that they've done, they've determined that the third Monday of the year is always the most depressing day of the year. <laughs> I will not be depressed because we have a serious How Cool Is That segment coming up. It is the ninth <laughs> Annual Design Symposium at the University of Waterloo, and we got one of the coolest toys you're ever going to see here on Daytime coming up next. So come back and join us. Hi, welcome back to Daytime. Well, coming up this Wednesday, you have the chance to go tour in the William G. Davis Computer Research Center at the UW campus. It's the ninth Annual Design Project Symposium, and I have four gentlemen here who are all in the fourth year. Is it computer engineering? Yeah, that's right. Computer engineering program uh, who have designed... <laughs> oh, this, this is cool. This is cool. Why don't I get you each to introduce yourselves, and uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm Brian. I'm Josh. I'm Nick. I'm Ryan. Okay, and and do we have a name for my little com my little co-host here? We've uh, we've been struggling with to find a, a creative name. <laughs> so far, we just keep calling it Telepresence Robot. Okay, so how how do you come up with this? Because I know with webcams, people are starting now to do a little more video conferencing, that kind of thing. This really takes it like a huge step forward, doesn't it? That's right. So basically, the problem we thought with video conferencing was basically that you always have to pick your location and sort of stay there. So we thought, why not give you the ability to drive around wherever you are? Right. So basically, it's like video conferencing on wheels. So you can take this and drive around another office, for example. Right. Yeah. So it, so it literally could be if you're in Seattle, Washington, and somebody here, you could talk to each other real time. That's right. And, and go for a tour of the office or Pretty much. You just could walk into a meeting? Exactly. Kind of thing? Instead of having to set up video conferencing at the meeting where you are, you can just drive yourself into the meeting and interact like you're really there. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I have to ask, so, so who had the original brainstorm of this idea? Um, I think that'd have to be Brian. That'd be Brian. <laughs> yeah. Was it Brian? Yeah. yeah. I, I just sort of sat back and said, this is what we're doing. Do it. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so tell me about how this all comes together. This is a fourth year project. That's right. Mm -hmm. and are you, do you pick your own team, or are you assigned to a team? Uh, so we're all, we were all pretty much friends, um, and so we just decided it would be best if we all became a group, so we did. Um, it's typically a group of about four to five people in your last year. Right. And then what you do is you get together, brainstorm an idea, try to put it together over a couple of terms, and then I guess on Wednesday is when we present it to the public. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. And, and there's some, I, I was looking at the list of some of the other, the, like people are coming up with incredible ideas that, that are usable. It's not just, you know, blue skying or anything like These are actual practical Absolutely. ideas. I'm sure there's thousands of golfers out there who love the <laughs> idea of a GPS loaded golf ball. Yeah. For, yeah. At least I'd be able to find half of them. Exactly. Most <laughs> of them are underwater and I'm not going to bother, but at least the GPS could tell me. Yeah. yeah. There's some great ideas. And so how did you go about building and designing this? Uh, it was a long process over two terms, basically. Uh, it started out as us trying to figure out how we're just going to do this in the first place. Uh, a lot of the stuff that goes into a fourth year project isn't necessarily stuff that we learn in school. So it's a lot of racking our brains for what experience do we have and what can we throw into it. So we just started with uh, basically throwing around some ideas for how we want it to look and then went from there building it from the ground up. Very good. Now, Ryan, can you maybe go through some of the, the components of what might be <laughs> hidden inside this, well, as you this can lovely see, structure? Um, inside that gray box there, we have a controller board for the wheels. So Josh here has the joystick, and it can you can turn on the spot, go forwards and backwards. Um, so can, uh, move around. <laughs> also, um, since the robot needs to go around, it's got to be wireless. So Josh is connected with his laptop with the uh, with the robot there wirelessly. Right. Also inside there is um, to power it. We we use two rechargeable battery packs. Wow. Um, I think Josh could explain a little bit more as he built it. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you the you were the the hands behind around? I was us? the more like, the physical Absolutely. part of it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, we've got two rechargeable batteries. There's a what we what's called an embedded PC. It's, it's about the size of a 4x6 photo, and it's like a full-blown computer, pretty much. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and wow. so, yeah, we run Windows uh, XP, and but an embedded version, which is kind of like a smaller version of the one that you get on a full-blown computer. Right. And so you get to customize it to exactly what you want. So it didn't eat up like gigs and gigs of hard drive it space. It doesn't even have, <laughs> no, it doesn't have that much space. <laughs> yeah. So does it run with a hard drive? Um, no, it runs with a compact flash card, which oh, you'll yeah. see for like some uh, like uh, digital cameras and stuff. Right. Yeah, so it runs right off of that. But it's got RAM just like a laptop or a computer does and everything cool. else. Now, Nick, can you talk about how the two interlink? Um, well, that would be um, what we have is the, the, we have a wireless router right now, which is running uh, just behind here. And uh, just using standard internet protocols, we can uh, send information over, over the network just between the two. Um, so we have the control that we need to do, as well as the audio and the video conferencing. So uh, that was all a lot of work to get that working. Um, it was important that there wasn't too much delay yeah. on, on the audio and the video. Just lag time, yeah. Um, <laughs> especially since with normal video conferencing, you're just interacting with people. But when you're driving a robot, you, you, you can't have the delay of more than a couple seconds, or else you're going to start running into things. Right. So um, we tried to keep it as, as standard as possible. But uh, so we're just using standard internet stuff to uh, to transfer the the data between the two points. Now, how I guess, for lack of a better word, it'd be wide angle. Do you have on yours? Because you kind of have to see potential obstacles in front of you, do you not? Yeah, that's one thing that we noticed once we kind of got it together was <laughs> you got to, so we have pan and tilt on this camera so you can look up and down, left and right, and you, we found that um, at first especially you have to look down at the base while you're driving right? Um, to be able to see like how wide your base is and stuff. Right. Um, in the future, if we were to go any further, we were, we were talking about maybe putting a camera on the bottom so you can kind of see where you're going and then oh, you yeah. have another one to kind of see people's faces. But for right now, yeah, you do have to kind of look down to drive. Yeah. Well, you know, they have those minivans now, too, with little things that beep at you when right. you get yeah. too close yeah, to the an warning, object. Yeah, the warning, yeah. Um, sorry. Let's we go. do have um, proximity sensors on the base, so that if you're about to run into a wall, it'll actually stop you from driving. So uh, we have three on the front and two on the back. So you, you can't actually run into anything because it'll actually stop you before you run into it. Right. Now, are we linked up to the cameras here? Or um, no. no, this camera... This camera here is the one right here on my laptop, so you can okay, see so me here. So we can see you here. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey. <laughs> and and so if we're at a meeting, can you can you zoom around and come in on me? Um, Go give it a try. try. Let's do a tour. Okay. I'm bring I'm bringing TR with me to the meeting. <laughs> so if I want to talk to you, I would face you like this. Right. And then I know I can like oh, look, put so the, the camera. camera. It just pivots. Yeah. Okay. So I can move that with the joystick too. So. Then I would talk to you like that. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Okay. So so zoom over to there. Video. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> and what kind of wheel is it? Just polyurethane, normal wheels. It looks like you've got. Um, we actually got the. We made those wheels. They're just a big chunk of round plastic. And you actually made them yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is cool. So and all of this is vying for the the coveted. What what do you call it? What's the word? It's the infusion cup. The infusion yeah. cup. Oh, right. I'm sorry, TR, you're blocking the shot. Okay. You have to move, buddy. <laughs> Here you go. It's like being in the real world. <laughs> there you go. It's great when you can like yell at a computer and it listens. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time I've yelled at a computer and it listened to me. Yeah. This is very cool. And, and so is this something that, that could be mass produced if, if there was a demand for it? Uh, so our objective was to create something that is low cost enough so a business could swoop in and say, I really like your idea, let's mass produce it. So we've used basically freely available components that, uh, that are standard. Um, so the cost is low uh, and it is all components that you know you can go to your computer store and buy or order online. So there's nothing too difficult in there. What a yeah. And, and when, does the, when does the judging happen? Wednesday, uh, during the, the symposium, um, we had judges that walk around. We don't really know who they are, yeah. and they just secretly tabulate scores, and then we find out at the end of the day. Yeah. Very good. Well, this is very cool. And this is something that the public can go to. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, what are the hours of the, of the symposium? Uh, so the symposium runs from 9.30 to 8 on Wednesday, and that's at the Davis Center in uh, UW campus. Right on. Mm -hmm. People can just come in and just wander around Absolutely. and, and yep. see all the displays, and you're there to, to talk about it? Yeah, we're there. there. There's posters set. Everybody has a poster. There's 50-plus groups with different... Everybody has a different project, and they've got posters, and people will be walking around to ask questions, too, and everything. Very cool. Yep. Well just the sign of things to come. So don't get freaked out if one of these things comes on an elevator in a couple of years and just stands beside you and go, hello, how are you doing? Uh, very good, gentlemen. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. and uh, good luck on Wednesday. Thanks. 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 All right. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay. All right. Come on back. We'll have more daytime after this.